The following is a presentation of Learfield IMG College. This is Doc Insider. Doc Insider. Give it to Verdell. He's got the first down and go, Duck fans. Start celebrating. Oregon is the 2019 Pac-12 champion. The 2020 Rose Bowl champion. Richardson, another open three. Good. Duarte dribbles and slams with the right hand. For the third time in the last five years, the Ducks are And champions, and now Pac-12 tournament champions. Welcome to Duck Insider. We're just getting started. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio. Here's Joey Mack. Thank you, and a busy show coming for you today as Kelly Graves, Oregon women's basketball head coach, and Dane Altman, Oregon men's basketball head coach, met with the media uh, midday today, just before we're going on the air. Scott and I have been going through the Zoom press conference. Should we start calling them Zoom conferences? You know, they're not real. Like, they are still press conferences, but is it, it just feels weird different it's it, it's not really like a true press conference anymore it's it's a little bit odd uh but some of your facebook comments and questions uh, great ducks last night was a lot of fun we're going to talk about that uh some news out of the pac-12 conference today and i'm really excited to debut our new regular segment that we're calling bring them back rob mosley wrote the first bring them back story about a longtime oregon football alum in larry rose that was posted on GoDucks.com. You can check it out for the first edition of Bring Em Back. Today, we'll start our first version of the Duck Insider portion of the Bring Em Back campaign. And that is going to be with Adnisha Curry. Adnisha Curry, Coach Eddie, as she goes by, is an assistant men's basketball coach at UMaine. She's also a Duck graduate, played for Jody Rungi and Bev Smith, won the WNIT in 2002, and has since gone on a trailblazing career coaching in various walks of basketball following her playing career. Fascinating story and truly a trailblazer. She's the only full-time female men's basketball coach at the NCAA Division I level. We're going to talk with her about that. Uh, we actually sat down with her this morning. We have that interview for you coming up in just a few moments. Also going to hear from Kelly Graves today. We'll stick with the women's basketball portion on today's show. And then tomorrow, Oregon Athletic Director Rob Mullins is going to join us on Duck Insider right here in the Country Financial Studio for an update on all things Ducks. We will also hear from Robert Johnson, head coach Oregon Track and Field and Cross Country. They will be seeing Hayward field the cross country and track and field teams on friday we're going to talk with robert johnson uh, as a media group tomorrow we'll have that interview for you on tomorrow's show and then i'm planning to have all of dane altman's comments from today in their entirety on the show on friday so we got a few things going on over the next few days but really excited to hear from Ednisha curry also a quick note today out of the pac-12 conference announcing more testing partnerships this time for a conference-wide surveillance testing effort. Uh, essentially, this is just another testing mechanism to keep student athletes safe because this is in addition to the point of care testing capabilities that are now on campuses around the Pac-12, including here at Oregon. As Rob Mullins noted last week that the machines are here and the staff is getting up to speed with how to use these Quidel machines for rapid testing. Each Pac-12 institution currently has what's called an RT-PCR testing practice and protocol in place for their athletic departments. The new partnership, which is with Fulgent Genetics, will be able to serve as a supplemental resource for each athletic department to utilize. In other words, more testing the better off we all are, and it's going to be a huge help toward getting back to that semblance of normalcy, which, by the way... I just want to reiterate, as we're talking about all these fun things and there's a lot of optimism, remember to grab your mask, wear your mask, and keep those gatherings to a minimum because Lane County is seeing surges. Just one of the 12 Pac-12 communities, but Lane County is seeing surges. Public health officials are warning that we could move back into that phase one of reopening per the governor's office guidelines. Please, I get it. I'm right there with you. This all really sucks. 
the let's do everything that we can to look out for our neighbors and make sure that we can get back to football and sports in general would be a huge, huge benefit. A great Ducks last night talking tight ends. You can see it on the Oregon Football Facebook, Oregon Football Twitter, and also on the GoDucks YouTube channel. Give a search for Great Ducks-TE for tight ends. Uh, our list was, and this is, again, the way that we did this is if – the four of us, and actually the five of us last night with Dusty Hare from 1080 The Fan joining us. And Dusty was great. Thanks for being with us, Dusty. It was – the, the rules are basically if, if a guy appears on more than one of our lists, then then we we made sure to have him on what I'm kind of deeming the master list. So we had Ed Dixon, Russ Francis, Josh Wilcox, Blake Spence, David Paulson, Tim Day, Pharaoh Brown, Dante Rosario, Justin Peel, George Reister, Jacob Breeland, Jeff Thomason, Willie Tate, and Jed Weaver. Those were the guys that we recognized last night. A few other names that I didn't even mention that we have on there as well. And Great Ducks has been a lot of fun. You can also subscribe to the Oregon Sports Network podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. So we've got it for you there as part of our Oregon Sports Network podcast. Uh, some news and notes around women's basketball and men's basketball today. And, and again, we'll hear the comments in their entirety, but I do just want to summarize a little bit of what Coach Graves and Coach Altman had to say. Essentially, the schedules are still being figured out. We're in the midst of the planning process for the schedules for basketball with more information hopefully coming as the head coaches and various athletic departments meet and figure out some of the answers to the questions around the country. That is the plan ahead. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into our Bring Them Back segment. Adnisha Curry, trailblazing career, a pro duck, and a true, well, first of all, a true awesome conversation and a truly great personality that that you'll hear from Anisha Curry. Fans, you remember her? She transferred into Oregon, was a standout player for Jody Rungi and Bev Smith. We talked about her favorite duck memories and what it's been like being the only female full-time assistant coach in NCAA Division I men's basketball. An impressive story as we begin our Bring Them Back segment with Anisha Curry. Okay, so everybody's heard me talk about this now a lot, and it's it's been a lot of fun with our Bring Em Back campaign to talk with some great ducks and some alums who are doing great things in the world. So let's start by first introducing our guest today, Adnisha Curry. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, and I could take up 20 minutes just reading the bio of Adnisha Curry. So instead, we're going to do something that I usually do on the show. Uh, Coach, you, you traditionally probably have not seen me do this. But I make everybody tell their two-minute life story from their own words when they come on the show for the first time. This is the first time we've had you on the show. So I'll be sure to fill in some of the other uh, you know, highlights of your bio in a minute. But the two-minute life story for you, Coach. Wow, two-minute life story would be for me... Um former duck champion, you know, won a WNIT championship with the ducks 2002, um, drafted in the WNBA played for Phoenix Mercury and the Los Angeles sparks, then went on to play eight years internationally Europe, um, in Europe, in the middle East. After that, what did I do? I coached globally, Mm -hmm. you know, I coached in China, I coached in Israel and Vietnam. Then I came back home, coach women's basketball at the University of Maine. Mm-hmm. Then I decided to take a leap of faith in coach men's basketball. And that's where I had an opportunity to coach an NBA, coach an NBA summer league with the Spurs. And, you know, I'm in my third season coaching the University of Maine men's basketball program. That was like right under the shot clock. Like that was a great Yay! life story. So well done. Uh, you know, it's funny. The more and more basketball players that we've talked to like you guys just think faster than everybody with the shot clock I tell you what you no know, time and situation is important it's a different it, you know it's either winning or losing or you know getting yelled at your coach <laughs> when you're a point guard all right that's true that's true okay so I've, as you can imagine I have multiple follow-ups to talk with you um, first and foremost maybe the most important thing so you go by Coach Eddie, I understand, right? How long have you yeah. gone by Coach Eddie, and, and where'd that come from? Where'd the nickname come from? Uh, since I was 18 years old, uh, when I first uh, started collegiate basketball at Cal State Northridge, my uh, first coach, Coach Michael Abraham, just gave me the nickname. He went with Eddie, and it's stuck ever since then. All right, and well, now here we are. Uh, okay, so I know that a lot of people uh, have heard your name, and it's cool for us uh, – 
as ducks to talk with a trailblazer. So I'm sure I'm sure that you've heard this question a lot. You mentioned the the leap. You're the only woman in the NCAA Division One men's basketball ranks as a full time assistant there at UMaine. Just what does that mean to you? And 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 and, and maybe the follow up to that is: Are you tired of people asking you that question over the last three years? Um, I'm never tired of it because you know it's needed. Um, to be asked so other people can think about it. Like, why? Why am I the only one? Um, But I'm also excited about it because I know there's more coming. You know, the women um, that I get to mentor, you know, that want to follow in my footsteps, there is, you know, more women coming, and I'm excited about that. You're seeing it more and more across all sports, and and how rewarding is that for you to see right now? I mean, you probably saw the picture with, with what the NFL had going on with a female official and, and the two different teams that had someone on staff. And just, how, what does that mean to you? It, it represents what the world should be. It should be truly diverse. It it should be about giving everyone opportunity, um, regardless of gender. You know if you can run the plays and if you can know the playbook as well as uh, your counterpart being a man, then you should have the opportunity. So uh, it excites me because I know that the more and more that we see it, the more and more decision makers are going to start thinking twice. Like maybe there is a pool of people that I'm not thinking about. Mm -hmm. I I think that's awesome. I got to tell you, this is part of the why I wanted to, to talk with you because here at Oregon, we have the Be Oregon initiative. And, and Coach, I'm not sure how familiar you are with it, but but Oregon's been really, in my opinion, on the forefront of diversity, inclusion, and, and really growing a community in that way. And I got to say, I, I feel like you're like the perfect example of, of what that should stand for. So I got to say, it's it, one, it's just a true honor for me to talk with you and, and just get this perspective. And then, two, do, do, you, do you see more and more of this – coming over the next few years like you mentioned that we're kind of in the middle of it and 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 I guess maybe what 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 does the future look like maybe is the better way for me to ask that question and and how do we get there you know for me the future would look like seeing a every staff on the men's side look like women's basketball Mm -hmm. not one gender yeah all coaches from all over the world just coaching basketball and giving their hearts selflessly and their wisdom selflessly to better young men on and off the court. That that's that's what I see and I see it coming, you know, and I see it coming because in the 3 years of, you know, going to my third year here at Maine, I see conversations changing. I see more and more ABs head coaches calling me saying, you know, who are the top women candidates that you work with? Do you know? And that didn't happen before. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that, I know that we're going to get a change in the, in a, in a change and a shift in how um, the benches look in, in college men's basketball. Anisha Curry, our guest, uh, great duck. I, I'll just say that. Uh, thank you for, for what you've done and, and just given us this perspective because I think it's super valuable. And I, I, I got to say, I, I was reading more and more about you as we were getting ready to talk today, and, and I, I saw that you had mentioned in, in a previous interview in an article about how the, the student-athletes don't really treat you any different, right? Like, like they, don't, they don't seem to mind as much. And you're shaking your head right now. I'm, could you just kind of give us some of that perspective of, I feel like maybe there's the, this assumption out there that, that you would be treated differently, but I thought that was super interesting that you said that, that it really doesn't matter to them. Look, student athletes have goals. Whether it's to be pro, be all conference, be a starter, make a thousand points. That's what they come in. Well, they come in goal-oriented. They do not really care who gets them from A to B. As long as you get them from A to B. I always tell everybody, we have been conditioned to think that women are less. And that narrative is is grown in media. You know, like, when I got hired, it was like, okay, what are you going to do because you're a woman? What are you going to do? And I'm like, dude, it's basketball. Hmm. 
I'm going to teach a jump shot the same damn way I teach a woman flares or teach a men's flares. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't get it, you know? So, you know, the, the greatest thing about, you know, my experience, one of them is, you know, when my head coach was asked that, he's like, dude, look, I needed a staff. I needed a coach. And one of my coaches who was damn good, whoa, happened to be a woman. I can't do anything about that, but I wanted to hire the best coach. And I thank him for that because that's how everybody should look at anything from, you know, boardrooms to, to colleges, to university, hiring the best people, no matter where they come from, what they look like, hire the best people and give the best people the opportunity to thrive. Pretty powerful conversation with Anisha Curry. We're going to continue. Uh, she is a pro duck coaching at UMaine now after her career playing for Oregon and beyond. We're going to talk about all that, her favorite duck memories, and what it was like playing for Coach Rungi, Coach Smith as well as we continue our Bring Them Back segment with Anisha Curry. It's Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union back inside the Country Financial Studio right after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield IMG College. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager. Learning the lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. I'm Little Teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip! Me over and pull me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Back inside the Country Financial Studio, it's Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. I'm Joey Mack. Uh, Ednisha Curry, we talked with her earlier today, and we're going to continue our conversation. Part of Bring Them Back, a effort on our part to talk with some great alums around the, the pro duck and really the entire University of Oregon community. That's our goal with, with this segment that we'll do on Duck Insider, and Rob Mosley will be writing stories for on GoDucks.com as well. Ednisha Curry, the only female full-time assistant men's basketball coach at the Division One level in the NCAA. She's at UMaine. We talked about her duck career and her coaching trajectory and how she got to where she is now as we continue our conversation with Adnisha Curry. As we talk about your career, d did you always want to be a coach when, when you were done playing? Was it always in your mind? Hell no. <laughs> I did not want to be. It's funny because my first college coach, Mike Abraham. He, at like around 25, you're 24, 25, he was like, you're born a coach. You're born a coach. And all I could think about was the 17-year-old, 18-year-old Anisha Curry, and I was like, hell to the no. <laughs> I don't want no parts of her. I don't want to, you know. And then I think of how 
rewarding it was for him and other coaches to see my growth. And I saw myself as I got older, I was like, damn, I was a headache. Like I was a lot. <laughs> you had to really work. Like I can I can give you 40 points, I can win some championships, but I was a headache. Yeah. And that's what I saw in coaching. Like I was like, I don't want to deal with it. So coaching for me, you know, when I became a pro and even in college, it was more like giving back. Fun thing to do. I never saw myself as a coach, but slowly I started the competitive side of me came and I was like, I'm damn good at this. Like, yo, like you've been doing this for a year and like, I got you. Like the, the, the whole like competitive side was coming out in me. And I was like, Hmm, it was like pinky in a brain. I was in my back, like <laughs> secretly doing practice plans, <laughs> focusing on YouTube, like ready to come to practice secretly to show up other coaches. It was weird. And then all of a sudden I was like, I like this. Yeah. I can, I can do this. <laughs> do you find that coaches are even more competitive than, than current student athletes? Cause I, I gotta say, like, I've kind of seen that with, with, with <laughs> former student athletes that I've interacted with that then have gone on and become coaches. And I'm like, man, you're more competitive now than I remember when you were 18, 19 years old. Yeah, because it's like this, like, kind of like cat and mouse game, you know, chess, you know, you're trying to see who's getting the best players, you know, who has the best offense, who, you know, who's developing their players past, you know, faster. Um, and you appreciate it differently. You appreciate working hard differently. You appreciate being competitive differently. Um, because when you're a coach, your commit your competitiveness is not about you it's about growing someone else so your pride and your you know your go-to every day is like dude i'm going hard but it isn't for me anymore it's for someone else to have a better life and, and achieve their dream so i would say you know i am way more competitive now as a as a coach and i am as a player because you know someone's family depends on me to give my best every day to make sure that their their son, their grandchild, you know, their brother is the best young man, not only on the court, but off the court. That's awesome. Uh, I, I love talking with coaches about their motivation because it's so cool to just the, – the selflessness to me is is really what makes – people like yourself special and uh, you know I, I hope that more and more people will be like that because I think we kind of need some of that right now <laughs> all right uh, you know real quick I, I'm curious now w w talking about all that I know that you work as a mentor coach as well can you tell folks ab about that and, and how your perspective maybe with everything that you just talked about it's probably changed a little bit when you're mentoring some other coaches and future coaches you know, yeah, you know, so like usually during the off season, I do, you know, the NBA assistant coaches program where, you know, I mentor former WNBA and NBA players. Um, and my role usually in my mentorship is teaching former players, you know, the power of technology, the power mm -hmm. of video. And it totally changes because when I'm mentoring adults, it's like, man, this is like their life. Like they're willing to change, you know, uproot their family for their dreams. And it's, it's a different appreciation. It's a different respect because, you know, these are individuals who, you know, maybe were star players trying to transition and find their way. Um, they may already have careers and they're trying to transition into coaching. But in the end, it's really about giving of yourself for other people and being okay with that. Anish Curry, our guest, uh, talking about a, a trailblazing duck. All right, I've been talking about you with your career. I could do this for another 10 minutes, but I do want to ask you a little bit about your time at Oregon because you played for a couple legendary figures around these parts. Uh, can, you, can we go back in time a little bit? And I'll start maybe with why did you come to Oregon in the first place? Like what, what about this place brought you to Eugene? Oh, my God. So – I, I was a star player at Cal State Northridge, won championships, All-American. Um, but the one thing that I kept hearing about my name was, I don't think she can make it in the next level because she, quote unquote, doesn't play the big players. And I'm like, really? I'm like, <laughs> I've, I've had big games against big players. Like, what are you talking about? So I basically 
made a decision to be like, okay, let me move up and show people that, you know, I can start and I can lead another team to a championship. And that's really what um, led me to, you know, um, coach at Oregon. I mean, play at Oregon. And it, it was, it was really at a young age, you know, me making a mature business decision. If I wanted to be drafted and um, wanted to play professional, I kind of had to um, play the politics. And during that time, the politics against me were, okay, you play in the big sky and no one respects the big sky. I don't care how many points and championships you make. You know, they don't respect that. But they will respect me if I'm a Pac-10 player at the time. So that's why I moved up. What was Coach Rungi like? What was Coach Smith like uh, playing for, for those two? <laughs> You're laughing. I'm ready for some good stories. Wow. Coach Rungi uh, is one of my favorite coaches. Hmm. Of You know, she's definitely top five coaches. Like, Coach Rungi is like, give it to you straight in your face. Like, dude, Co Eddie – you suck today. <laughs> get, in her nice way, get your ish together. Right. <laughs> and Coach Smith was like that, but it was like in a Canadian sarcastic <laughs> way. But it was kind of like she still had kind of like a pe player swag. Like, yo, mm -hmm. look, I don't have to like motivate you. Like, look, like, yo, I'm like one of the greatest ducks. Like, dude, just listen to me and just go, you know? Right. So they both were the same because they were extremely competitive. But what I liked about both of them is I always knew where I stood. Mm -hmm. It was never a mushy middle. Like if I was having a bad day, I totally respect people to just give it to me black. And they both gave it to me like that. You know, along with, you know, all the great assistant coaches they had, you know, I, Coach Litzenberger, mm -hmm. Coach Muscatel, you know, um, Mike and Allison McNeil. I had some really great assistant coaches and just great coaches at Oregon, period, um, who are all still, you know, in my life now and are following me. But, you know, they all had that pro mentality, which I think helped us because it was like, dude, this is not going to work at the next level. You told me you wanted to be a pro. So, look, I'm treating you like a pro now, which, you know, helped with me. You know, I got to tell you, Coach, uh, so Bev Smith is now the, the, the color analyst for our women's basketball broadcast <laughs> with, with Terry John. So I, I, I wasn't sure if you knew that. I, I mean, she's – Yes, I, I do. <laughs> I got to tell you, she's great. Like – I, I learn I learn something from Coach Smith every time I sit next to her and 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 just talk to her about basketball. I mean it it's been a lot of fun uh, for, for me. So Great I, basketball mind. She loves basketball. She she, you know when she taught, she taught you like so many little nuances mm -hmm. that you couldn't see as a player that you're like, whoa, oh, okay, I can use that. You know, um, and she brought that kind of like international flavor um to our our team and, and it helped a lot you know it really prepared a lot of us for you know international play and playing professionally at nisha curry we're talking with the pro duck uh, she's the only female full-time assistant men's basketball coach at the ncaa division one level out at umaine uh, talking about her career and and bev smith there uh, we'll continue that conversation in just a moment duck inside today brought to you by north fork public house open for dine-in and take out north fork eugene.com a uh, quick time out come back more with ed nisha curry loving this conversation duck insider presented by on point community credit union back after this on the oregon sports network from learfield img college this football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports watching drink of all time, Pepsi. With refreshing deliciousness specially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouthwatering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong. I used to care when Mike chaired so hard he spilt nacho cheese on my carpet, but thanks to Pepsi, even Mike can't ruin my football party. <sighs> So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. 
So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. It's important to buckle up your kids. I know. Sometimes car seats can be complicated. I know. And if your child's in the wrong seat and you get into a crash. I know. It could lead to a serious injury. I know. So you're 100% sure you have the right car seat for your child's age and size? I don't know. Don't think you know. Know you know. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Make sure you have the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack with you inside the Country Financial Studio. Today's show brought to you by Shadow Hills Country Club, your family resort just minutes from home. Call for a tour today. We're continuing our conversation with Anisha Curry. Played for the Ducks a uh, couple years under Jody Rungi and Bev Smith. Went on to play professionally, both in the WNBA and internationally. Came back, coached some women's basketball at the college level. Now she's the only female full-time assistant men's basketball coach at the Division I level in the NCAA at UMaine. Uh, and you'll hear in a moment, we're going to try to get UMaine on the, on the schedule, I think, for, for men's and women's basketball here at Oregon as we continue talking with Anisha Curry. What was the WNIT run like? Take us back and, and just walk fans through that, 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 that championship. I mean, that was a, that was a real high moment. It was, but the start of it wasn't. I'm gonna be completely honest because we were we were so competitive and we were pissed. We were pissed off that we didn't continue on the legacy of consistent NCAA's. Mm-hmm. We were mad. We were very, very mad. So it was that moment of like, I don't want to play in a not invited tournament. Like it really was like that for a lot of us. Like I just I'm done, you know. But then, like, after we let the mad emotions, you know, settle down and we're like, okay, we're going to play this. But we went in. That team really went in, and I knew we weren't going to lose. Because we went in, like, if we're going to go in this tournament, dude, we're going to win. We're going to put a banner up. Like, there's not going to be, like, oh, second round, W. that's not an option. If we're going to go in this tournament, we're going to win a freaking championship. And that was – That mindset of that team, and if you go back to that team and just see the success of all the women from that team, you'll understand why we won a championship. You know, I'm I'm wondering, because I've heard so many great stories about Matt Court, that run is one of them. You've played in a lot of different venues. You've coached in a lot of different venues. Is there anything quite like Matt Court? No, it's not. Like, like. I could just remember so many games and, you know, we have thousands of fans and, you know, they're having to like call timeout or the, the opposing, you know, Pac-10 coaches at that time were complaining <laughs> because the rims were shaking mm-hmm. and they were like making excuses why they can't make free throws. And we we're like, do we make free throws? Like you just can't shoot. So like we're talking <laughs> trash and just like the support, like, you know, going to like away games and us having like vans and charter buses of people just following us. Like it was unbelievable. And we would laugh like home games because it would be hot. Yeah. That's what people don't know. Matt court was hot. It was like when I played in WNBA, I felt it was like Madison square garden. Mm-hmm. It was hot. It was creaky. You know, when you're downstairs changing, you heard everybody dribbling upstairs, you know, it was dead spots. It was just everything about old and traditional basketball. 
But, you know, we would laugh, like, we would go in warmness and we see, like, opponents, like, touching it. We're like, oh, game over. Like, they, they like it, it, the hot box has gotten to them. And it was just the support of the fans, like, the community in Eugene is like no other. Like, it, it's just really amazing. You know, I'm curious, uh, you, you touched on how, how Coach Smith helped with, with some of the international flavor. You played it professionally in multiple different walks of professional basketball. Just what, what was that experience like? And, and, and the follow-up is, how much, how much did that experience now help you guide some of the players you're coaching now toward all the different opportunities that can be out there with a basketball career? You know, I think the most important thing about, you know, having that international experience and having that diversity is it allows you to 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 open up as a as a person mm. it allows you to think different it allows, allows you to learn different um and, and see other people and see other you know aspects of the world and in different perspectives and you know having international players on your your um teams having international coaches you learn different things so when i went to play i was like oh, i'm just used to this you know um and it wasn't like I got angry when I was in Greece and I had to like figure out, okay, how am I going to speak Greek? Because if I don't learn how to speak a couple basic words, it's going to be absolutely awful just to get tomatoes. Like I'm going to be right. the one, A, do like pointing, <laughs> like, come on, like getting frustrated. And, you know, now it's helped me, you know, on the men's side recruiting, you know, um, I don't know if you know, like last year, what do we have 11 different countries on our team? Oh, wow. Um, here in Maine. So we're probably one of the most international um, teams in all of men's basketball. So uh, that helps, you know, those connections, those relationships and just understanding how they think and, and how they play basketball um, has been phenomenal. That's cool. That that's really cool. A, a closing thought. I I've already kept you longer than I thought. So if you have to, oh, if you have to hop, good. okay, good. Just making sure. I don't want a coach to be late for a recruiting call or anything like that. No, I mean, no, I'm me. good. <laughs> that's like that's like in my line of work. That's like the worst thing that you can do. We just want to be the fly on the wall for for folks like yourself. <laughs> hey, I, I'm curious. I I kind of want to close with this, Anisha. Just favorite duck memories that, that that maybe you could share with fans if, if any come to mind that are just like some moments that you're really proud of i think fans lo love to hear from from folks like yourself on that subject wow the letters um that i received when i became a men's basketball coach mm -hmm. um the dms you know just the messages of appreciation um that i received from the community and and just numerous people that were at the university when I was there, it really meant a lot, you know? Um, and just the, the times where, you know, they text me and just say, yo, I'm proud that you represent our university um, means a lot. And, you know, what I can think most is after those hard games, whether we won or lost, we always had our fans. Mm -hmm. And that meant so much. Like they wanted us to win and they were there to cheer for us through the good and bad. And those after the game moments with young kids and their families and now having those families follow us through our career as we, you know, our life after being a duck, it, it's amazing. Like truly being a duck and being a part of that community is really special. Mm -hmm. That's cool to hear. That's really cool to hear. Well, hey, good luck to, to you guys at Maine. Let, let's work on getting Maine and Oregon on each other's schedules oh here. Oh, my God. I would love it so I can come back home. Let's do it. I mean, I, yeah. I get, you know, that's a long flight, but hopefully Look, in the in the post-COVID era we can, we can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Tell Coach to give, give us a call. <laughs> I will. I, uh, in fact, Coach is actually going to be on the on the show here on Friday, so maybe I'll, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll sneak it in, yeah. as uh, slide in, slide in, <laughs> as best I can. Well, hey, Anisha Curry, thank you for for what you've done, and just thanks for being a duck. That was a that was great fun to catch up with you, and good luck uh, the rest of the way in your career. And here's to getting that that game on the schedule here sooner than later. I'm I'm going to put in a word. <laughs> thank you, go ducks. <laughs> That was a lot of fun catching up with a true trailblazer and a University of Oregon graduate, a pro duck, uh, coaching at UMaine, Anisha Curry. Uh, coming up, we're going to keep it on the women's basketball front because Kelly Graves just wrapped up a Zoom call with some reporters. We're going to have that for you coming up. And
some updates, but actually not as many as I think we and it sounds like he would like. Doug Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Uh, we're going to talk with Coach Graves next inside the Country Financial Studio on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. As my family continued to grow, I realized I'd have to replace my beloved Jeep with something that has, well, more seats. I'm Jason Hines, country financial rep and father of seven. Whether you're upgrading from your sporty ride with no room for a car seat or finally replacing your well-loved beater that still has a cassette player, you'll want the right protection for your new car. Work with a country financial rep like me and get the protection you need at a price you can afford. Learn more at takesimplesteps.com or contact a local country representative. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar presents an original that's now maybe even better. Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a bottle of Mountain Dew Zero Sugar with the same refreshing taste as the original, but with zero sugar. Same refreshing taste as the original, but with zero sugar. Same refreshing taste as the original, but with zero sugar. Mary had a bottle of Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. Let's taste what's as good as the original, maybe even better. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. As good as the original, maybe even better. This is the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Everybody buckle up. Bum, 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 bum. Buckle up. Let's go. Buckle up. Can we go to the store? Come on, buckle can we get up. some ice cream? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody. Everybody, buckle up. A lot goes on in the car, but you're in control. So only move when you hear the click that says they're buckled in. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. I'm Joey Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. Thanks again to Anisha Curry for taking the time to chat with us. That was a lot of fun. Jackson's Food Store is proud sponsor of the University of Oregon Ducks. Stop by your local neighborhood, Jackson's, for all your game day essentials with everyday specials on game day necessities. You'll be ready for anything the big game brings. Go Ducks. Kelly Graves met with the media today, as did Dana Altman. Uh, a long conversation with both of the basketball coaches here at Oregon. So we're going to have Coach Altman. I'm scheduling him for Friday to talk with, with everybody about what's going on, and we might even have some updated answers for you by Friday as the head coaches continue to meet. We'll begin, though, with women's basketball head coach Kelly Graves. He talked to the media and the first part of three, actually, of a long conversation, giving you some updates on where the Oregon women's basketball season is at. Here's Kelly Graves. Yeah, well, you know me. I'm not much for opening statements. Good to see everybody. Um, I guess this is what we're going to do now. Uh, I've been watching all the uh, pro sports and – and uh, it just kind of seems a little awkward. Needless to say, I'm going to miss your faces in person, um, some more than others. So anyway, uh, yeah, fire away, you guys. Good to at least be doing this much, for sure. Kelly, good afternoon. Hi, Howard. Um, I'm curious how much, if you could put it in a like rough percentage, you feel like you know about your team and your personnel compared to what you – typically would at this time of year, given how different everything has been? Uh, about 50%, I guess. You know, I haven't seen uh, our team play live. Uh, yet, you know, we haven't been able to do anything live, no contact, no defense. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the, the good thing is recruiting now, you start recruiting kids when they're freshmen and sophomores. So I've obviously seen them play a lot. I know what they're capable of doing. But, uh, you know, I'm worried about separation right now. But that will come, you know, when you start going live. So that's why I put it at 50%. I, I just don't know yet how they're going to operate, you know, at both ends of the floor, uh, playing with others. We look great in five on O. Our dry running is amazing. So, but, uh, you know, 
<laughs> we'll see when we go live. Uh, Kelly, kind of along those lines, obviously, uh, you have a lot of talent on the roster, some veterans that played with the big three, some veterans that sat out, uh, key transfer, the number one recruiting class. What's kind of the process of going about uh, using all that talent and trying to develop kind of the chemistry that your last three or four teams had? Well, you know, it's funny. I've looked back at a lot of our game film. I've looked back at all my practice plans from 2016-17. Uh, uh, just to, to kind of re refresh my memory, what did we do those years? You know, how did we sequentially go through teaching the offense? You know, because what we do offensively is the same thing as I've done for the last 10 or 15 years. So, but with all those incoming freshmen, the one, the one wild card was that year we had the foreign tour. So we were able to practice 10 days, uh, you know, before we got started in the fall and we played a few games. So we were a little ahead of where we are now. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of looking back to look forward. Uh, there's going to be a lot more teaching, Ryan, this time around, big guy. You know, you just can't assume that, uh, you know, they have Sabrina's level of knowledge and, and feel for the game. Same with Satu and, and others. So there's a lot more question marks, but I agree with your premise. I, I think we've got as much talent, if not more, than we've ever had in our, our gym. And so we will rely on those players that have, you know, even Jazz Shelley, you know, that's a lot of experience. Taylor Chavez, a lot of experience. You know, Taylor Mikesell, you know, she hasn't played for us, but she's played for a really good program in a, a high-level conference. So she's ahead of the game. So I, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. We'll, we'll come along. Hey, coach, hope you're doing well. Uh, let's do, let's talk scheduling. Where, where, what's kind of the latest with the non-conference schedule? <laughs> That's a great question. I have no idea. Okay. We, we, we meet today as a, uh, a Pac-12 coaches. We met last week, and we're looking at a 20-game scenario and a 22 game scenario it could also be uh you know we still might go to 18 I, I don't know so but we'll know today we're actually meeting and I think we'll have a better understanding of what we're going to do I've already been on record as saying I'm for the 22 game Pac-12 schedule I I love the double round robin and and even if it was not a COVID year I would I still want a 22 game schedule I think that's fair. I, I love it. We play in a great conference, and uh, you know, and that will really test us and, and prepare us. So I don't know if it's a twenty-two game schedule or twenty game schedule. I think didn't the guys agree to a twenty game this year? COVID or no COVID? I think so. Uh, you know, there's a chance that we mirror that. I, I don't think that's been determined yet. Whether we're going to go double headers or or try to to you know to uh, jump on to the to the men's schedule and mirror it so when we're in la we're all in la i don't think that's been determined but i think we're getting pretty close do you have any idea on non-conference yet well it could be three games it could be uh as many as seven if it's seven i've i've talked to a few people to try and get into a bubble tournament one of those mtes um they're all over the place in, in terms of who's coming who's not coming i i just think there's more questions still nationally than there are answers uh, if it's just three, I'm going to, you know, I already had on my schedule preliminarily, okay, on the old schedule, Portland, Portland State, Seattle U. So those are three local schools that I would like to still play uh, early in the season. But our, our game with Baylor in Vegas, I think that's up in the air. I think the men have bailed on that tournament, if, if, if I understand it correctly. Uh, we were sparse, supposed to be part of that tournament. Uh, our trip to the Bahamas has been canceled, and that's where we were hoping to play Oklahoma, South Carolina, Marquette. That's where we were going to get a lot of our, our big-time non-conference games. Hey, Kelly, just to uh, follow with that before an uh, additional question, there was also Long Beach and Princeton uh, in the non-conference. Are those also wiped out at this point? Yeah, they actually were a long time ago. I think the, uh, the Cal State system, I think they were one of the first. And he, he's a good friend of mine. He just said, hey, I don't think we're going to be able to go, so let's do it again. Uh, later, Princeton, you yeah, know, the Ivy's pulled yeah, first. their hands were tied, and that was done early. Gotcha. To the uh, timeline in terms of uh, uh, testing and everything else that's going on going forward, I know practice starts on October 14th. So is that when you guys could start contact, assuming the daily testing, everything gets up and running 
sometime this week or so, approximately? Yeah, James, that is my understanding. Yes, up until then, we have, we're in our 12-hour weeks. Uh, our, our, our student athletes right now are isolating, and uh, they all came back just this past weekend. So, uh, and then my understanding is later in the week, we hope to be tested. And then when cleared, and let's keep our fingers crossed, uh, after they've been isolated now a week, we'll be able to hopefully start uh, by Sunday with, uh, you know, some of the similar stuff we were doing before. We can dry run, uh, we have to have our masks on, and then a lot of individual work where they're uh, socially uh, distant. And then come October 14th, I, I, I'm hoping that that's when we start our testing protocols. And then when that's the case, then yes, we can go live without face masks. That's my understanding. And but, last, but like everything else, James, and I've heard you on the radio the last few days, I, I don't know. I mean, I could change tomorrow, big guy. You know, Lane County, come on, man. Yeah, yeah people around here got to start taking care of business or we're going back to phase one and who knows how that will affect us. So, you know, it's still, it's still up in the air a little bit. Some sobering reality from Kelly Graves with a lot of excitement. Additional testing being announced today by the Pac-12 Conference wide. But it is still a unknown of how things could change as things move forward. We just don't know yet. Kelly Graves brought to you by the Wayne Valley Cancer Institute and Research Center. Fight like a duck with cancer care you can count on. A question coming from Anita Football Schedule yet? Not yet. Hoping by the end of the week, uh, potentially early next week we might be talking about it uh, but Larry Scott did say at the end of last week that the conference was hoping to have it finalized uh, this week that we are currently in. Tobiah, will every Oregon women's basketball game be on the Pac-12 Network at minimum this year? We do not know that. Um, the television announcements have yet to come for football. After football gets figured out, uh, the way that it will usually go is then men's basketball, women's basketball will get sorted as well. What happens with the Pac-12 Network and there are some financial hurdles we don't know yet, um, and I can tell you that at least for us from the Oregon Sports Network, we are already working on a lot of different ways to be able to still broadcast the full schedule for football, men's basketball, and women's basketball, potentially without traveling with the teams. We feel, and I maybe I should just speak for myself, I feel that it is important for us to find a way to still broadcast the games and provide the play-by-play -play of the games to you all, the fans, but we also don't need to necessarily be there with technology today. Certainly it'll sound better. It's going to be a lot easier if we were there, but in order to keep the bubble as minimal as possible and to have the least amount of people that need to go through the testing and that have to go through all these procedures and Frankly, it's it's a risk mitigation for, for my purposes as the broadcast operations coordinator for OSN. I'm just being 100% transparent with everybody as we start to figure these things out. Hopefully, we'll have some answers here in the next month. I, I think I can tell you that's what I'm doing the most of my day when I'm not getting ready to host the show. Um, I hope that answers your question a bit. All right, uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to wrap things up because we've got a Cafe M two-minute drill and some other news and notes around Oregon athletics. Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union back inside the Country Financial Studio after this in the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter Brooklyn was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. 
I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. Taking a look at your two-minute drill, always brought to you by Cafe Yum. So, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, the Pac-12 today announcing another testing partnership. This time, uh, sort of a supplemental partnership to the Quidel Agreement, which has rapid point-of-care testing already on campuses. Just another testing resource for the various universities and athletic departments around the Pac-12 footprint to utilize. Also of note today, Kelly Graves and Dana Altman spoke to the media. A lot of unknowns. In fact, there's probably still more unknowns for basketball season than there are answers. But Kelly Graves did say that the schedule is still being molded by Pac-12 coaches. 18, 20, 22-game schedules all on the docket. Kelly Graves is a fan of the 22-game schedule. Dane Altman said something similar with the men. They're not sure what things will look like. They don't know who they're going to open up with for non-conference games yet. All of that is still being figured out. We'll have the rest of Kelly Graves' comments on the show tomorrow, and we'll also hear from Robert Johnson, Oregon track and field head coach, on the show tomorrow. And we'll have Dana Altman's full press conference for you on Friday, in addition to our conversation with Rob Mullins tomorrow for our athletic director interview. That's your two-minute drill brought to you by Cafe Yum. Restaurants throughout Oregon and Washington, where special diet requests and custom orders are always welcome. Menus, nutrition info, cafeyum.com. Again, Rob Mullins, Oregon Athletic Director, will join us to kick off the show tomorrow. We'll talk with him about a number of topics, as you can imagine. We'll see you then. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesmen to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll have the info you need to get more for your future. Go to aceyourretirement.org because when it comes to speeding past financial challenges, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council.